Why are human beings evil? Why do people hate one another? Why do we cheat each other? Why do people turn into predators and monsters? Why do our nations commit genocide and war? Where does this come from? The Bible teaches that the evil plaguing human beings is inspired by evil spirit beings. Could this be true? Find out next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Your Bible teaches that in many of the, its books that there are evil spirits in this world, and yet that is a mystery to people in this world. Why is that? And it even gets worse because God's own people have been turned away in this end time, uh, led astray from God. 2 Thessalonians 2 talks about a great falling away. And in this end time, a great falling away from the truth of God just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, what was the cause of that? What was the cause of that great falling away? Well, it was because of being deceived by evil spirits. And yet, it's a mystery even to most people in God's own church. That is provable from your own Bible. And it gets even worse than that because almost 50% of those who turn away, well, actually 50% of them, lose their eternal lives. Lose their eternal lives. And the reason? Well, the evil spirits have deceived them and turned them away from God. Now, that's certainly the worst possible tragedy you could ever see, that you could ever understand. And yet it's a mystery to those people. Why is that? I've never, I don't know of any place in the Bible where you can see such a massive spiritual destruction than what happens in this end time just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. There's no other place in the Bible where you'll find that kind of destruction spiritually. And that means there is no future. So that's the worst kind by far. But if God's own people are deceived like that, how about this people in this world? How, how bad is it in their own deception? How can you avoid that? I'm not, I mean, you personally, we, and we can. Each person can avoid that. And Paul, the Apostle Paul shows us exactly how to avoid it, and I mean he gets into details, but he shows, and uh, other scriptures show, that there are armies of evil spirits, and they are powerful. They're more powerful than men, and yet it's a mystery. How do you explain that? That is just truly astonishing, and yet it is the truth. It is the truth. There is Certainly good news, but some bad news before we hear or reach the good news. Let's take a look at uh, Colossians 2 and verse 8. The book of Colossians is actually uh, in the New Testament, and uh, about 2,000 years ago it was written, and it was written because of a lukewarm church or a Laodicean church of God. And it is only a type, though, of what happens in the end time to a Laodicean church or a lukewarm church. People who just get lukewarm about God's truth because, well, because they're deceived by evil spirits who are more powerful than they are unless you use God's power. Then they can certainly be defeated and totally defeated. Notice verse 8 of Colossians 2. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. See, not, not, they're not grounded in God's Word, but they're into delusions and fantasies and wrong education, philosophy. I mean, people that get into that subject are well-educated, but... Look at what happens to them here. So beware, beware don't, that you uh, 
Don't trust anybody but God and His Word. No man, no man can be trusted. This vain philosophy is after the rudiments of the world. That means the ruling spirits of the universe. That's the kind of power we're up against. The ruling spirits of the universe. Power to influence people by, in their moods and attitudes and feelings. And I mean people at the very top, they, they really can wreak havoc to a king or a president or somebody in charge, prime minister, whatever. But this, this discusses armies, armies of evil spirits, and yet in spite of that, in the many scriptures about that, this world is almost totally deceived on that subject, almost totally. They are ruling spirits now only on this earth because of something really dramatic that happened in the universe about 30 years ago. And you can prove that from your own Bible. But it says in Revelation 12, verses 7 through or 9 through 12, and I'll read that to you a little later if I have time. But they are confined to this earth. All of those demons, all of those evil spirits that were out there in the universe doing a lot of damage out there, and yet they are no longer there because they were cast down to this earth and now they're confined to this earth. And if you just want to look around in the world, you'll see all these problems developing and that is the reason. And people don't understand, but they're getting scared and more scared and frightened all the time, and they should, but they don't understand the mystery uh, behind it. They don't understand what it all means, and they should. God wanted us to and wants all of us to, but we have to be receptive to what God says in Bible prophecy. We have to be receptive to that. This is a mystery, but look, it does not have to be a mystery to you, and it should not be a mystery to you. God wants all of us to understand this, but the world, for the most part, has chosen not to. Verse 18 explains it in the, in the context of, uh, let me just read this to you, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, but this is fallen angels, and of course only God should be worshiped, but intruding into those things which He, a man, has seen, it should be instead of not seen, you can read that in almost any commentary, they just made a mistake in the translation, but vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. See, these uh, evil spirits are actually being worshipped. Just like 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, Satan is the god of this world. A god is worshipped. So they are worshipped. If you look at uh, intruding in verse 18, it means to invade, make a, a hostile incursion into. And it's invaded by evil spirits, an army of evil spirits, and they get control of a man, one man, who is in charge of God's own church, and he shows himself that he is God, it says, in another place. And that, how outrageous is that? And yet he, he turns the whole church of God away from God. That's the power these evil spirits have, invaded by the, uh, these evil spirits, and it, the, this man that there is there was, did know all of God's truth, he had understanding of it, but he turned away from it, and Satan got control of him, and the evil spirits began to influence him. And that's all in your Bible, and you can prove it. It isn't that difficult at all, and yet it still remains a mystery, and it's been proclaimed by this church for about 70 years. See, this man had to, had to become an, like an angel of light. That's a problem with uh, people 
in this world, they don't realize, as it says in 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 14, that Satan comes as an angel of light. He comes as an angel of light. He looks so good on the surface. It looks like, well, it's just a, such a loving, good way of life. But you can't accept that surface understanding. You have to dig into God's Word and see what is really happening. And it's not pleasant. It's not something that's good. You can be sure of that. They come as an angel or evil spirits of light. And they deceived 95% of God's people, but there was a 5% remnant that stayed with God and goes on and proclaims the very message of God about what happens to God's church in this end time that should never have happened. But it did because of these evil spirits. 50% of more of them go have to be plunged into the Great Tribulation, but they do repent then, thankfully, and uh, we can thank God for that. But uh, again, it, it means intruding into those things which He has seen. He's just haughtily treading all over God's Word and casting the truth to the ground. And it's a terrible crisis, the greatest crisis in, this, in the Church of God perhaps ever certainly in the New Testament church. It, it, in terms of numbers, there's never been a crisis like this, as far as I can tell. But he just took over and trampled the truth into the ground. Verse 19, and not holding the head, capital H, not holding the head. Now, this is the greatest possible crisis from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together, increasing with the increase of God. That's verse 19. See, it, it, it's a capital H. They've lost their head. What, do you, what is it like if a physical body doesn't have a head? Well, that's a, just a gory, gruesome picture. But what about a spiritual body that's lost its head? That is the greatest crisis of all. Jesus Christ is the head of His church, and if they, you lose the head, everything is just the worst possible tragedy. It just couldn't be any worse uh, a catastrophe than that. Adolf Hitler ruled Germany in World War II, and he also then started World War II. And here's what he said at one time, quote, What you tell people in the Mass in a receptive state, a fanatic devotion. Remember, this man is responsible for the deaths of 50 million people. And look what happened here. Look at, look at the mystery and the deception here. What you tell people in the Mass in a receptive state of fanatic devotion will remain. Words received under a hypnotic influence, evil spirits, are radical and impervious to every reasonable explanation. And he said this is a, becoming a, a new age of magic interpretation of the world, and he, that's coming, he says, of interpretation in terms of the will and not of the intelligence. Well, what, what, is, the, what is the problem here? Well, the, the, when you live by the will and you worship the will, which is what it says they are doing here, you're worshiping evil spirits. Notice verse 23, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship, worshiping armies even of evil spirits, worshiping the will, which means worshiping man and not worshiping God. Now this. This happened to the, I mean, just to the tune of millions of people. Millions and millions of people because, well, these evil spirits were a mystery to them. They didn't understand what was going on. They thought they could work with Adolf Hitler. There was no way they could because he was led away and controlled by evil spirits. Will worship, and he admits that. And if people knew their Bible, they'd be horrified by what was going on. It makes it very clear in the Bible what was happening, but you, uh, anytime you're uh, worshiping the, the human will, you're just worshiping man instead of God. And then the evil spirits are going to get to in, well, either 
influence your life very heavily or control it, and you have to be so careful. It goes on to say uh, there in verse 23 that the forced worship of angels, I mean, these are, de these are fallen angels, and they are tyrants, and they force their will on men. They, they, they force their way on mankind because, well, Christians and others in, in too many cases are weak and don't use the power of God, and that's what happens. And it's still a mystery to this world. Isn't that amazing that it's still a mystery? They force their lifestyle on you. They force themselves onto this world. That's why they're worshipped, and the world seems to love it. They love being in captivity to this great evil monster and his followers. Notice Daniel 8 and verse 9. You just need to remember that Daniel is a book only for this end time. It's not for any other time. God, told, and You can see that in Daniel 12, verses 4 and 9. Daniel was told to go your way. You can't understand this. It's for the latter days, which is the time we're living in right now, this very moment. And here it talks about armies of evil spirits and makes it really clear. It even tells you that there are armies. Notice verse 9 of Daniel 8. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. So, but there's duality in this now. Anciently, that Antiochus uh, had, had a, did a lot of horrible things in Jerusalem, and you can read that in our booklet on Daniel. It tells you all about that, but there's duality here. There's an Antiochus in the end time that you can see right here is inside God's church, a man inside God's church that has, is into will worship and following after evil spirits. Verse 10, And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Stars or angels, that's, those are God's armies of angels. If the people of God use them and follow them and are guided by them. But in here, uh, in this case, just the opposite has, has happened. God's own people have rebelled against Him. And that's how that Laodicean or lukewarm church develops. Strong's Concordance defines host this way, where it talks about a host of heaven, but it, but it could be an evil host that, that was cast down from heaven. Host, this, it's defined this way, a mass of persons, especially organized for war and soldiers, army. That, that is, is, means mustering soldiers for warfare. Host can mean an army of demons, or it can mean an, an army of men who are following after these evil spirits, which is what God's church is doing for the most part in this situation, in this end time scenario. Sinning saints, he, these evil spirits are uh, actually an army uh, by themselves, but they, are, they also have another army with them, which is the sinning people of God who have now allied themselves with these evil spirits and they're casting God's truth to the ground. They had all this truth of God and then they cast it to the ground. Notice that in verse 12. And an host was given to him against the daily, or God's work, the daily sacrifice it's called, but it's just God's work today, by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Now that's an army of evil spirits and an army of God's own people who rebelled against Him, now led by these evil spirits. They cast the truth to the ground. They had the truth of God. They understood the truth of God, and, and these evil spirits came as an angel or as angels of light and deceived most of God's own people. 
if they're deceived, well then what, where does that leave the rest of the world? How much deeper is their deception? Well, this is a, an army of, uh, that, that, that we need, really need to avoid. Now, God says we have to be soldiers. 2 Timothy 2 talks about we, us being soldiers for God. So if we're soldiers for God, we use God's power and we defeat those evil spirits. Every time, if we trust God, and I mean every single time. But there is a battle. There is a war. That's why God says we're soldiers of Jesus Christ. You can see there at the, where it talks about verse 20 or oh, verse 19, I guess, where it talks about the last end. And then verse 24, it talks about it's not by his own power. That is this man's power. It's, it's the power of these evil spirits. And it's a mystery to everybody almost. Then verse 25 said, well, there's the, the great ending where Jesus Christ is going to come and destroy them. Without, um, this will be a destruction without hands, which always applies to God. He comes and smashes that, all of those evil people, and then Jesus Christ returns and we have peace and joy and happiness. You can see in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 where it talks about, uh, it, again, uh, the Great falling away inside God's church. I'll uh, just paraphrase this due to a lack of time. But here again, you see, there's a man of God sitting in the in the in the church of God, God's own church, and showing that he himself is God. I mean, that that's the kind of powerful influence these evil spirits have over this man that sits in God's church, and, but he comes as an angel of light, and many people think, oh, it's just wonderful, but it's anti-God all the way. That is a fact. And thankfully, there's a, that all that happens just before, it says, just before the second coming of Jesus Christ, and that's the good news that's going to put an end to this forever. Notice, uh, Revelation 12 and verse 7, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. You see, they're no lo- they, they were cast down to this earth, no longer uh, ruling spirits of the universe, but ruling spirits of the earth in a massive way. But they, they were confined to this earth. You have to see that terrible things are happening on this earth, and this is the cause of it. This is why it's so much more intense than it's been in the past. Never have we seen evil like we see in this end time. Everywhere you look, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceives the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Millions of evil spirits. That happened about 30 years ago, and we can prove that to you from the literature that we'll send to you. It, it's, it, it's no longer the way it used to be. I mean, this earth is just infested with evil spirits like it's never been before. And notice what, what God says about it them being confined to this earth, even though it's still a mystery to them, but soon they're going to have to see this. They're going to have to see it. God has spoken. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. He has great wrath because he knows he has just a short amount of time before Jesus Christ returns to this earth and kicks him off his throne and replaces him on that throne because he came to this earth and qualified to do that about 2,000 years ago. Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman, which is a symbol of God's own church. See, when he was cast down, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child, and he turned 95% of them away from God in a short few years. Now what, that, that is just amazing how much power he has, and yet people 
understand these evil spirits? No, almost not at all. It's a mystery to them. But notice the reward God gives this woman, and to the woman, or this God's church, that little remnant that was loyal, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, time, and half a time, and from the face of the serpent. So that's God protects His church in this great tribulation. He protects them physically and spiritually and just because they obeyed Him and got His message out and did His work and God looked after them. See, this was a radical turn of God's church so quickly because these evil spirits, when they were cast down, just attacked God's church and, and well, destroyed it spiritually in many respects, almost totally. Even though the people in the world see this, they see it, it still is a mystery to them. But God wants to protect us physically and spiritually, and that's the good news. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. You live in an evil world, and the evil that so deeply infects mankind is becoming almost impossible to ignore. Where can you turn to understand where this evil comes from and how to fight it? Request your free reprint, The Mystery of Angels and Evil Spirits. The Mystery of Angels and Evil Spirits contains Chapter 2 from Mystery of the Ages by Herbert Armstrong. This chapter will introduce you to what the Bible says about the spirit world. Do angels and demons exist? Is Satan the devil real? Can he influence human beings? If so, how? Can human beings resist evil spiritual influence? Can they even identify it? You will find answers to all these questions in The Mystery of Angels and Evil Spirits. Also request Gerald Flurry's booklet, Colossians, First Century Parallels. This booklet will show you specific prophecy and specific recent history that shows not only that evil spirits exist, but what they are doing. Colossians will show you what the Apostle Paul says about evil spirits and the only way you can avoid being deceived and enslaved by them. It will reveal to you Satan the devil's strategy for taking over God's own church and forcing people to worship him. Request Colossians and prove it to yourself from the pages of your own Bible. All our literature is available free of charge with no cost or obligation to you. Request Colossians and the mystery of angels and evil spirits today.